Now, you can know that something is true. You can know that something's true and it really not matter that much to you. You can even believe in some truth, but it really doesn't move you. It really doesn't change you. If you hear from a friend about a beautiful guy or girl that they've seen, here, man, this, this person, they are hot. They are beautiful. You can believe that it's true. Sure. You can know it's true. But then when you see it for yourself, you say, wow, that is true. They are gorgeous. And if you see someone like that, you probably even will tell other people about it. What happened? Did you get new information? No. You just beheld it for yourself. You saw the beauty of something and you beheld it and it changed your perception of it. Nothing changed other than that you experienced it. If you hear about some new restaurant that's come into your town and people say, man, this restaurant kills it. This, this is the best Mexican restaurant I've ever had, whatever it may be. You can believe that it's true, right? You can say, sweet, I believe, man, my friends, I trust them. I trust that it's true. It sounds great. And they can tell you all about it. But then if you go there for yourself, you're, you're going to experience how delicious it is. And you're going to say, wow, this is delicious. And then you will probably tell people about it. Before you go somewhere, you're like, man, I hear it's great. It's awesome. I haven't really experienced it, so I can't really say. But when you experience it for yourself, then you're moved. And then you know, I know. I know this. And so you want to tell others about it, because why? Because you want them to enjoy it, too. You don't want them to just know that you enjoy it. But you want it to move further than that. And you would love for them to be able to enjoy something like that. What changed? Did you get new information about the restaurant? Or were you just dumbfounded by the deliciousness of the restaurant, of the food? You beheld its glory. You beheld how delicious it was. My suspicion is that a lot of us know about Jesus. We know big truths. We understand doctrines. We understand that Jesus takes away our sin, that Jesus makes us righteous, that we are counted righteous in God. We understand Jesus is the fulfillment of all these things in the Old Testament. We know that. But my suspicion is that a lot of us haven't really been impacted by it. We haven't really experienced that Jesus is true and he is good and he is all satisfying and he is who we say he is. You can come on Sundays and you can hear, you can hear me try to expound and try my best by the Holy Spirit's leading to, to show you who Jesus is. And my hope every week is that you would be it would, you would just well up with joy and that you would leave here never saying, man, that was a good sermon. But if even something were to be said like that, you would say, man, Jesus is awesome. Jesus rules. I don't want you to think that I preached a good sermon. I want you to be more dumbfounded with how amazing Jesus is. I want you to be more in awe. That's my goal in preaching every week. But my suspicion is that a lot of us haven't really beheld the beauty or the deliciousness of Jesus on a personal level, or maybe even some of us at all. You can hear about Jesus on Sundays or at your community group or, or even through Twitter or on Facebook or watching YouTube clips or watching sermon videos or anything like that. But you maybe haven't for yourself. Now, who has ever thought something like this? It would be so cool. Maybe even some of us today, we've thought this. It would be so cool to be like Peter, James, and John. How awesome would it have been to be on that mountain? To see Jesus transfigured. How awesome would it have been to be Moses? To see that burning bush. To see the, the cloud and the pillar of fire. To talk with God. How amazing would that be? I think, how cool would it be to be Peter? Peter goes on to write two of the books of the New Testament. Man, he got to see Jesus. He got to see Jesus after he rose from the dead. How amazing would that be? We've all probably thought something like that. And then, then we go 
further and say, man, God, would you just give me a vision? God, would you just reveal yourself to me in a, in a real way? Would, how cool would it be if an angel walked in here and just started talking to us? Or, I, I kid you not, before I started preparing this sermon, as I was praying, I pray sometimes like, God, would you just reveal yourself to me in this crazy way? And I remember thinking in my head, how cool would it be if I just heard God's voice? I was thinking that. It's like, man, that'd be so cool. It'd be so cool to just hear this deep Liam Neeson type voice that he just says something, Brett. <gasps> I would have probably peed my pants and fallen on the ground like most people. But how, how amazing would that be? Or some people say, if God would just reveal himself to me in this way, if I could see it, then I'd believe it. A lot of us kind of have that. We go off that. and we, we even go off just what other people say about Jesus and let me show you what Peter, the, the same Peter that was on the mountain of transfiguration that saw Jesus, that when he's probably telling Luke about this, when Luke's, Luke is writing this gospel account, he's saying it's, it was, he was like a flash of lightning. That's how bright he was. Let me tell you what he says concerning this very thought. The same Peter that saw Jesus on the mountain, he says this in Second Peter Chapter 1, 16 through 26. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when we received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very Voice, born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Peter's talking about being here with Jesus. They heard the same voice. And we, we have, sorry, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention. As to a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. He says that we have something better. He says that the Bible is even something more sure Peter's explaining how he beheld Jesus' glory on the mountain, and he says, we've, we've, we've got something even better than that. There's something better than being on a mountaintop experience and seeing Jesus transfigured. There's something more sure than that, even. We have the Bible. We have the prophetic word. And he goes on to explain, the, the prophetic word, the Bible that we have, the word of God is... It's not just written by man and God was like, that looks pretty good. We'll keep that saying it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. They were writing carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is beautiful to me. Verse 19, we have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. We have something better. This is what Peter's saying. I want want you to attempt, and I've been praying for you and for me, that we could get this. We have something better, Peter is saying, than being on top of a mountain and seeing Jesus transfigured before of us. We have something more sure than that. We have something more sure than mountaintop experiences. We have something more sure than going to camp for a week like when we were in high school and that mountaintop experience and then a few weeks later. We have something more sure than just a a gathering of the church and worship and sometimes maybe you're just overcome with joy and as we're singing or as the word's being preached or as you're just meditating or praying on the goodness of God that's shown to us in Christ, you just kind of overcome. I cry about every week in the times that we're singing. I'm back there just trying not to be bawling in front of everyone in case someone needs to be prayed for. I'm like, I'm sorry. 
We have something better than an experience. Peter's saying something more sure than this mountaintop, something more sure than beholding his glory in that way. We can behold his glory anytime. We have access to the word of God, to the truth of God revealed in the Bible. This is why we encourage you to read your Bible. This is why when people say, man, I feel like I'm called to go do this. My first question usually is for them, do you, do you read the Bible? Well, not really that often. I mean, I could always read it more. Well, that's always our answer. I could read it more. Of course, we could read it more. But are you studying the word? Are you giving yourself to the word? Are you reading the word? More importantly, are you letting the word read you? That's usually my first question. Are, are you mastered by this? Is this what you go to? Is this your food? Is the word of God what you are devoting yourself to? And is it from that that you feel called? Or is it from, I feel like doing something kind of cool and being a missionary or you know going to start this, that'd be cool, so I want to do that. There's something more sure than just emotion or just an experience, but it's the word. Peter himself saw Jesus and he says, this, this is better. We have the word of God to be encountered by, to encounter every day. First Corinthians says that the Holy Spirit opens our eyes and shows us and gives us these truths. He helps us understand the word of God. We're helpless to understand this without the Holy Spirit. And so if you are a believer, if you are in Christ, you have been given the Holy Spirit. And if you have it, if he lives inside of you, he's going to be opening your eyes to the word. And this right here, I don't care if it's this or on your phone. This, this is better than being on a mountain. This is better than seeing Jesus transfigured because you can see that every day. You can read Luke 9 every day. You could be on a mountaintop one day, but you can read this all the time. So better than everything is the word of God.